Hi guys, it's Cheyenne and today I'm going to be talking all about waves. So let's get started. So what is a wave? Well, a wave is a disturbance that transfers energy throughout a medium. The energy moves as it travels through the medium, but the medium itself does not experience net movement. This means that the medium returns to its original position after the disturbance has passed. Some examples of media that waves travel through are ropes, air, springs, and water. Mechanical waves are waves that travel through matter. The speed of a wave through a medium is dependent on the medium that the wave is traveling through. Mechanical waves travel through a medium by a push or a pull of a particle on an adjacent particle, causing a neighboring particle to be displaced from the rest position. That was a mouthful of words, so if we want to think about mechanical waves, we can imagine them as disturbances that transfer energy by vibrating the particles of the medium they are traveling through. To begin, let's discuss some common characteristics and terminology used to describe vibrations such as waves. Periodic motion refers to when an object moves in a repeated pattern over a regular time interval. One cycle or one vibration is one complete repeated pattern and it is represented by the letter N. Period refers to the time taken to complete one full cycle and it is represented by the letter T. Rest position is the position of an object when it is not in motion. When the object is in motion, the shortest distance between the rest position and the maximum displacement is known as amplitude. Amplitude is represented by the letter A. The highest point on a wave is known as the crest. Similarly, the lowest point on a wave is known as a trough. Wavelength refers to the shortest distance between two points on the wave that are vibrating in phase with each other and is represented by the Greek letter lambda. However, that is a very technological definition of wavelength. Wavelength can be simply thought of as the shortest distance between two points on the wave that are the same. Frequency refers to the number of cycles or wavelengths that pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. It is represented by the letter F. Since frequency is the number of cycles completed in a certain amount of time, it can be represented by the following equation, where F equals N over delta T. F is the frequency measured in Hertz, N is the number of cycles completed, and delta T is the time or change in time that these cycles took place in. Period is the amount of time it takes for one full wavelength or cycle to pass a given point. Or like I mentioned earlier, period is the amount of time taken for one full cycle to complete. Period can be represented by the letter T, and the relationship between period and frequency is that they are inversely proportionate to each other. And this makes sense. Let's say that I have an object with a frequency of 2 Hz. This means I complete two full cycles in one second. We can quickly calculate in our heads how long it takes for one cycle to complete. If two cycles takes one second, each cycle must take half a second. And this is the exact value we get when we find the period using the reciprocal of the frequency. So if we know the frequency of a wave, meaning we know how many full wavelengths are completed within a second, and we also know the wavelength of the wave, we can calculate the speed. This is known as a universal wave equation and can be represented by the following variables. V equals lambda F, where V is the speed of the wave, lambda is the wavelength in meters, and F is the frequency in hertz. However, we know that the frequency is equal to the reciprocal of the period, so we can substitute this into the equation to find a new equation that still solves for speed. It can be represented by the following variables. V equals lambda over t, where V is the speed of the wave, lambda is the wavelength still in meters, and t is the period measured in seconds. Now, let's move on to discuss different types of waves. Let's start with transverse waves. Transverse waves are waves where the particles of the medium vibrate at right angles perpendicular to the motion of the wave. Some examples of transverse waves are surface water waves and waves on a rope. So practically, this means that the wave is traveling this way, but the particles of the medium are traveling this way. So it'd be like your standard wave that looks like this. 
A longitudinal wave is a wave where the particles of the medium vibrate parallel to the direction of motion. An example of a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. Longitudinal waves are a little bit harder to imagine, but the direction of motion would be like this, and the particles would be vibrating like this. And finally, a torsional wave is a wave where the particles of the medium twist or rotate in planes perpendicular to the direction of motion. An example of a torsional wave is the Tacoma Narrows Twisting Bridge Wave. Now, let's talk about an extremely significant property of waves, interference. Interference occurs when two or more waves act simultaneously on the same particles of the medium that they are traveling through. The individual waves that interact are called the component waves, and the wave that they produce is known as the resultant wave. The principle of superposition states that the resultant wave is the mathematical sum of the component waves. So let's discuss the two different types of interference. The first type is constructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when the component waves displace the medium in the same direction, producing a resultant wave with a bigger displacement than the individual displacements of the component waves. The second type is destructive interference. Destructive interference occurs when the component waves displace the medium in opposite directions, producing a resultant wave with a displacement smaller than one or all the individual component wave displacements. We can also discuss a more unique case of interference known as a standing wave. A standing wave pattern is a special case of interference that occurs between two waves that have the same shape, amplitude, and wavelength. The component waves travel in opposite directions passing through each other. This is known as a standing wave because after the two component waves interfere, the resultant wave they produce has points on it that appear to be standing still, while other points on the wave appear to be changing from positive amplitude to negative amplitude. We can introduce two new terms, antinodes and nodes. Antinodes are places on the resultant wave that have amplitude, whereas nodes are places on the resultant wave that have no amplitude. Okay, and that is it for my introduction to waves. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye!